So what is the Indian Pacific Wheel Race? Um, it's a five and a half thousand kilometre solo unsupported race on totally sealed roads across Australia. Um, we're starting in Fremantle on the west coast, which is near Perth, um, and we finish at the Sydney Opera House in Sydney on the on the east coast. Um, it's all on sealed roads, 100% um, road race really. Um, single stage, the clock doesn't stop. So we're kicking off on the 18th of March at six in the morning and the clock stops whenever you get to the Opera House. Um, what was my motivation to start the race? Um, I think there are a few factors at play. Um, I had, uh, I've done a couple of races in the US, um, the Tour Divide in 2013 and the Trans Am in 2015. Um, had a really positive experience out of that and um, I thought it'd be great to put something on in Australia. Um, Australia is very different geographically and, and so on to, to, um, to Europe and, and the US and a race in Australia has a very different nature. Um, probably, probably flatter um, and probably a lot more remote um, than, than some other races that people have done. Um, the other aspect as well is there's a lot of Australians um, who are really talented riders but for whatever reason they don't have the time or money to get across to the big races in the US or Europe. Um, so they've lamented that fact, you know, after, after I've gotten back from these races and, and uh, they've sort of lamented they couldn't, couldn't get over and do them. Um, so I thought, well, let's try to put on a big race here with, with some, of the, some of the hitters and um, give some of the Aussies a chance to race the best in the world. Um, I guess the other aspect is there's a rich history of, of long distance cycling in Australia that dates back a long way, um, back into the 1800s. Um, back then guys were heading out into the bush on rudimentary bikes, not really knowing um, where their next food or water was coming from. No roads, just uh, following camel pads um, on animal tracks. Um, yeah, no technology either, no comms. Um, and so these guys were, were having a blast and quickly races formed and they were trying to be the fastest from point to point across Australia. So really we're just picking up from where those guys left off. I think it's a shame that um, that history has been forgotten. And so I'm trying to tie back into some of that with this, with this race as well. I haven't done a hell of a lot. I've been doing it, uh, doing this sort of multi-day riding for, uh, I guess, five or six years. Um, I've done the Tour Divide in 2013, um, where I finished second. Uh, the Trans Am race in, bike race in 2015, uh, where I won. And uh, yeah, I just, just love doing multi-day rides, heading out on an adventure with mates. Um, probably enjoy that a lot more than racing, but it seems um, I can get away with doing some races rather than, rather than bike touring, um, which is something I'd like to do a lot more of. Hi, this is uh, Mike Hall. <clears throat> Just at Manchester Airport, ready to uh, board my flight to uh, go to the Indy Pack. I have done three Tour Divides and a Trans Am bike race before, um, and a trip around the world ish. My experience to date in uh, bikepacking racing isn't that huge. I um, I've been racing for less than a year. So the Indy Pack is going to be my third race in 10 months. Um, so not even a year. Uh, the Trans Am last June was my first, first big race and um, a hell of a learning experience to say the least. Uh, after I completed that, I then went on and did Race to the Rock uh, in September last year, which was another one of Jesse's uh, evil concoctions. Um, that was an off-road race this time, so second time round I had a little bit more experience. Um, not so much on the off-road side of things, but obviously with what to expect mentally and physically. Uh, and obviously the Indy Pack is going to be my third race, uh, this time um, taking in the experience from two races. Uh, I'm putting a lot more pressure on myself in addition to the level of racer that is turning up to this event is going to be pressure enough. My experience in bikepacking is uh, not that big. I have ridden a transcontinental race three times. One time the Red Bull Transiberian from Moscow to Vladivostok. And each time everything worked very well like I wanted. So 
for uh, Australia it will be something completely new for me and I don't know what to expect because it's a continent I don't know don't know uh, how the situation is on the road about shops about traffic about everything the weather the sun self supported means you're you ride the full course under your own steam um, you source everything you need um, by yourself um, without any assistance when you're out there um, I think it ties into a couple of other concepts as well, like uh, you know, equal opportunity as well for for all the riders. Um, I think you need to act in the interest of, of fairness for everyone out there in sportsmanship, um, and so that that, that means um, you know only use services when you're 100% uh, confident that you're going to use them. Um, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. It's not fair to to go ahead and book accommodation well in advance, not knowing whether you're going to use it or not. Um, that's not in the interest of, of equal opportunity for all the riders. Um, I think also this day and age with social media as well, um, I guess soliciting help on social media is, um, is another factor as well. That's, that's really not, not cool in this context. You really need to be acting by yourself out there. Um, I think the other thing too is integrity ties into it as well. Um, really, we're, we're sort of largely self-policed in this style of racing. Um, integrity is really important. Um, reminds me of a story of of, um, of Hubert Oppermann, probably the most famous Australian cyclist, ultra endurance cyclist. So 80 years ago, he he broke the record from from Fremantle to Sydney, um, and yeah, there was a journalist travelling with them, and uh, one morning. Um, Oppie was getting ready to start his ride, um, the crew set his bike up, it was supported this, this effort. Um, the crew set his bike up at the front of the car and uh, yeah, before he kicked off, Oppie dragged his bike to the back of the caravan um, and then started his ride and um, you know, he wanted to make sure that he rode every, every inch of the course under his own steam and you know, a few metres you think that might not matter but for someone like Oppie with his you know, awesome integrity um, he wouldn't have been able to sleep at night knowing that he didn't ride those, those you know, three metres of the course or four metres or whatever it is. Uh, so integrity ties into it as well. Unsupported racing to me is, uh, it's about being responsible for yourself. Um, it's about making decisions on your own, uh, not having outside help or outside noise. Um, when other people are involved, a lot of things can go wrong. Um, sometimes they go right, but when you're left to fend on yourself, whether it's finding shelter or food or water, it's, um, it just makes that level of, of adventure just that little bit more challenging and a little bit more rewarding. So for me, um, unsupported is much more attractive than supported racing. It's um, it's that sense of achievement that you know that everything you do to get to the finishing line is a result of your own planning and preparation and thinking and and making good decisions as the race goes on. What attracted me to the Indy Pack? Um, well, I'm putting it on, um, so it'd be a shame not to go to my own party. <laughs> um, I think what we're trying to do with it was I, I really wanted to try to attract some of the hitters, some of the big names. Um, I think in our sport, you can't just show up to the crits next week and race all the fast guys. Um, it takes a lot of effort and money and time to get to these races, then to do the races and then to recover from them afterwards. So um, I think I wanted to try to orchestrate um, a big race, you know, a bit of a showdown between some of the, the big names in the sport. Uh, so we're lucky to have uh, Mike Hall and Christoph Alleget coming out um, you know, arguably the two best guys in this this genre of cycling, and uh, they haven't raced before. So, yeah, neither of them have lost in a long time, and uh, yeah, one of them has to lose this time around. And yeah, it doesn't really make sense for them to race because you know they they uh, they're both such quality riders. They could happily go on their separate paths and, and keep winning their races, never to ever meet. But um, I think they really want the showdown as well. So it's going to be really cool to see. Um, I think, uh, yeah, so it'll be fascinating to see this, this showdown on an untested course, first time across Australia. Why the Indy Pack? Uh, I like the idea of the Indy Pack because there's going to be some good riders there, really. Uh, I've done a little bit of the course before, but not all of it. It's very different to um, other races. It's got its own challenges. Um, 
and it's first edition. First editions are always good because you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know what the required pace is, you're not really measuring against anything that's gone before. So, um, we, you know, we make it up as we go along and it's, it's more exciting really. I can't wait to actually race across my own country. Um, outside of the fact that I don't think Jesse was going to let me not enter this race. Um, it's just exciting to be on home soil and see more of my own amazing country and have all these other people come and see what Australia is all about. Um, we may not have as big a mountains as, you know, Europe or America, but Australia has so much to offer and just its, it's outback region and uh, the, the coastal roads that people are going to see. Um, so that, that's a really big factor for me um, entering this race is that it is on home soil. Um, there's a lot of roads that I have ridden, there's many that I haven't ridden. Um, it's not necessarily an advantage having ridden parts of the course. Um, it could be really, really difficult knowing the roads well and knowing what's coming up. Um, ignorance is bliss sometimes in these kinds of races so um, less information might be a good thing um, but there will be a comfort in being area in areas that um, are familiar to me um, that have good memories or good experiences from the past I might be able to draw on that when things get really really tough at times and and they will get tough uh, especially when I need to come through my hometown coming through Melbourne and Riding past my home um, and not being um, drawn to, I guess, a change of clothes, a shower, and seeing my dog for all of a nanosecond. Um, well, I won't talk about myself, but I think what I'd love to see is uh, so the guys who've come from a, a long way away, so Mike Hall and Christoph and, and Juliana Buring and a bunch of other internationals, I hope they get um, the sort of adventure that I had in mind. Um, had a particular adventure in mind, not just the fastest way across Australia, but constructed the course so that um, everyone gets a, an amazing adventure, um, sampling a lot of a lot of high points in Australian cycling. Um, I'd also love to see um, some of the unknown Aussies, one known on the on this this bikepacking circuit. I'd like to see them, you know, rise rise up and and really give. Christoph and Mike a race, maybe the race they deserve. So I'd love to see uh, someone surprise, you know, everyone that's watching. I'd love to see that. It would be it'd be amazing. I really hope they get they the the Mike and Christoph they get the ra the race that I you know I think they deserve. Um, come a long way, trained hard. Um, there's a lot of eyes on them, so it'd be good if if it's contested um, with a few other people as well. Goals for the first Indy Pack, um, I guess. The big one's been ticked. It's going to be this incredible race with such a high level of racer. Um, but then there's all these other incredible stories too. Uh, there's youngest rider, there's the oldest rider, there's the sports rider. There's so many unique stories um, that it'd be a shame if you're only watching the front of the race. Um, we get caught up in the excitement of who's winning all the time that we forget to look back and actually focus on all the other little sub stories that are happening. And for me, um, I'm I'm disappointed that I can't actually watch the race and do the race at the same time because it would be great to actually see it from two sides. So hopefully next year, um, all going well, it will it will happen again. Um, but goals for me, obviously, apart from finishing the race. Uh, is taking or drawing on my experience from this last year and putting a little bit more pressure on myself uh, to do really well. I, I know my areas of weakness, um, I know what I need to work harder on and I've been training hard physically uh, and trying to work on the mental side a little bit more but um, a lot of it's easier said than done until you're actually out there. Um, feeling and hurting and, and having to make decisions about how to move forward. Um, so for me, I think this race is going to be much harder than the Trans Am. 
it's not as long uh, there's not as much climbing um, but the pressure I'm going to put on myself to perform and the level of rider I think will make this um, a really tough tough race my goals I don't know I don't know what to expect because the level is extremely high and the first thing is uh, having fun enjoy the roads and because it's like I told you it's winter so I don't I didn't uh, my training didn't going very well and uh, I have to made a different schedule for myself so I don't, I don't know what you expect I don't know what my physic um, is for the moment so we will see on the first day there are a couple of sections actually that are quite tough from a logistical point of view um, long gaps between services across the Nullarbor Plain um, over in the west um, yeah it could be a couple of hundred kilometers between services but then you know those services might be shut by the time you get there if you want to push on well you better be, be uh, you better be prepared um, even further on too, um, it gets less remote, but opening hours in Australia are quite sporadic, um, especially on the weekends. Um, so heading up into the high country, um, unless you've got a decent picnic basket, you might be forced to wait around for shops to open again. Um, so food is going to be a challenge out there um, for a lot of the way across the course, especially on the weekends, because um, opening hours are, are quite restricted. Not a lot of 24 four hour services outside of the major centres. Um, so yeah, I think the Nullarbor is going to be super tough, um, and then the high country, yeah, logistically is going to be pretty tough as well. What's the most daunting section going to be? I, th I think they, they've all got their challenges, like I say, um, I think the Nullarbor could be windy and a bit of a, just a slog. Probably the one, the, the part I'm looking forward to least, it will certainly be good to get it out of the way. Um, I think I'll be happier as a, as a bike rider getting into the hills and getting a bit of up and down and putting some efforts in. and. Um, that'll make me feel a lot better. But there's lots of sections that I'm really looking forward to riding for the first time. Um, I guess they're the more challenging sections of this race. So if we think about how remote it gets in areas, the stretch from Fremantle to Adelaide is going to be very hard. Um, I think it's going to set the tone of the race quickly. Uh, based on people's experience with uh, heat, wind, um, limited resources, water, uh, remote areas. Um, I think if you can get to Adelaide, that's, that's a large chunk of this race done and uh, the mental side of this battle done. Um, so I think that's definitely going to be the, the hardest stretch. Uh, I hope everyone's done their research. Um, you don't want to get caught out there. Uh, Race to the Rock last year had similar stretches where you were carrying water and carrying emergency food on the off chance that you may get trapped from rains and we just don't know. Um, uh, Australia has some pretty crazy weather at times and for all we know we could get struck with 40 plus degree days every day or we could have this crazy unseasonable rain again and just you know it's a complete washout it's i guess you gotta you know plan for all occasions so yeah definitely definitely that stretch to adelaide is probably the most daunting part of the race i think every section will be hard extremely hard especially if you count everything together uh, every part has its own hard things the first section will be flat extremely boring a lot of wind long distances and mentally it will be a killer after it you have all the hills i think the landscape will be nicer but um after 3000 kilometer desert can be extremely hard so the whole race will be extremely extremely hard especially because you're alone you have nobody to talk, there is uh, nothing to look at, just straight roads. If the wind will be in the wrong direction, um, it will be extremely hard, mentally, physically. If I look at how long it will be daylight, it will be 12-12, so 12 hours darkness. Um, 
in a way it's very relaxed to to cycle at dark but um, because you can't look around it can be strange coming hard and uh, when you're tired physically mentally not sleeping enough everything can be hard extremely hard so I don't know what um, what it will feels like um, I think Australia is geographically very different to Europe and the US I think um, there's it's quite remote there's there's long stretches of, of course without any services out there um, and so I think that that will be a challenge for those um, who are experienced in in uh, the established races I think also Australia just geographically is very different um, it's going to be some hot weather perhaps um, we might even get some snow in the high country too so the extremes of weather could be a factor um, in terms of the time of year down here um, I think the other difference too is we're going to be going right through the major cities as well right through the middle of the capital cities um, on uh, yeah, through, through Adelaide through Melbourne through Canberra and right into the guts of Sydney to finish so that's something you don't often see in these bikepacking races um, so in Australia those cities are critical they're widely separated but um, they're so important for the for the life of Australia so it's important to contrast the city with the with the bush as well and the outback in Australia I think to really understand what Australia is about so that'll give it a different flavor too and hopefully we get some dot watches and uh, local riders coming out and and uh, yeah, maybe even riding with some of the races for a bit and at least cheering them on. So hopefully that happens. What's going to stand out about this one? Uh, it's going to be on the left hand side of the road for once. Um, and then there's all the sort of cultural things that riding in Australia, the smell of dead kangaroos, you know, things you don't get anywhere else. Road trains, um, heat. It's going to be hot to start off with. Um, that's probably what I'm not looking forward to to begin with and uh, but yeah look at look at really looking forward to the race looking forward to getting that that bike under me it's a fast bike it'll be it'll be nice difference between a Europe race or in Australia I think it's um, for me Europe is the best continent for cycling I mean just for us holiday cycling because every five kilometers, 10 kilometers, you have different village, you have shops, you have supermarkets, you have restaurants, you have hotels. And even if you do cycling touring and you can make like 100 kilometers a day, you can cycle every day at a different landscape. I think in Australia, it will be for thousands of kilometers the same. So in that way, it's completely, completely different. Even the shops, the gas stations, uh, distance between everything is so huge uh, even by car it can be a uh, hard uh, even road range the way people use uh, the roads are so different like in French cycling is so friendly Belgium yeah, roads are a little bit terrible but yeah you know the situation in Australia not I think in this race it's quite flat um, so if the weather's pretty good the guys at the head of the race might be doing over over 450 a day. I wouldn't be surprised if the first guys come through in a bit over 12 days even. Um, look, there's a lot of factors that come into play though, of course, weather and, you know, if there are strong headwinds for, for days out there, then, then it'll really slow things down. Um, so, but I think, yeah, around 450 a day is probably, probably gonna, gonna do the job in this one. Um. So my targets, I guess, are much like uh, most people that are, are focused around that two-week mark. Uh, numbers really easy to suggest, and to say that I'm going to do 400 kilometres a day, we don't know. I, I could do more, I could do less. Um, it's a target. Um, I have a strategy, and to try and sit close to that 400 a day. Um, would be great, uh, but who knows? <laughs> who, anything can happen in these races and generally does. So all the best laid plans go out the window by about day two. So it's, um, it's gonna be a case of having some confidence in myself this time, not getting caught up with charging off from the start line and chasing everyone down, I guess, but is, um, it's been smart. So, 
I um, yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see what a year's experience and a little bit of training, uh, both physically and mentally, will um will do. So I guess we have to just stay tuned. <laughs> I'm actually riding a cross bike for this one, a Curve uh, CXR, which is a cyclocross race bike. Um, yeah, it's quite funny. I'm I'm one of the owners of Curve, and we've we've been inundated with requests for bikes just for this uh, Indian Pacific wheel race. So we're gonna have 15 bikes out there. Um, I was a little bit late actually getting my bike bike organised. So um, I've just taken a cross bike that we had in stock. Um, but look, our bikes are pretty versatile. Um, yeah, within our, our crew, we've done a lot of long distance riding on, on our cross bikes and they've worked, worked, worked flawlessly. Um, in terms of bags and setup, not really sure yet. I like to start with going through my pack list and then working out what I'm, how I'm going to actually pack it. Um, the Trans Am, I just strapped a couple of dry bags to my bike um, to keep the weight down a bit. Um, but for this one, I'm getting some support from Apertura. Um, I'll probably be running some of their bags. Um, on my bike, um, but it'll probably be every, a pretty minimal setup. Uh, Rafa has been a big supporter over the last three or four years. Um, their gear just works for this this style of riding, um, and it looks the part too. Um, so yeah, they're, they're fantastic help. Um, Cumulus Outdoor for, for the more survival oriented stuff. They make great sleeping bags uh, and more you know heavy duty um, survival gear as well. Um, in terms of jackets, uh, yeah, insulation layers and so on. Um, also K-Light uh, for the Dynamo light system, SP Dynamo uh, for great hubs uh, to keep me powered up and make sure my, my phone's charged so I've got an alarm clock <laughs> and some music to keep me occupied. Um, and yeah, so, so really grateful for the support I've had from, yeah, from some, some great companies like that to keep me, keep me rolling. Uh, titanium Kinesis frame, um, it's going to be rolling on a set of Reynolds Aero 65, 65 deep wheels. Um, so nice and aero, uh, I've got a f Apertura frame bags on there as well. So um, my bags are going to be uh, not, my, my bags aren't going to be at capacity when I leave. So I can get extra things in there and they'll still keep the same form um, uh, without bulking up or anything like that or hanging anything off the bike. So they'll stay, should stay fairly compact and aero. Um, I've got a DI2 uh, Dura Race group set with a little end shifters, uh, which are really good and a close ratio, uh, fairly big gears. I like to run big gears. Um, I like to like to push a nice big gear against the wind and up the hills. Uh, that's what most of my training has been about. So. so the bike I will be using, has been featured heavily here in my backdrop. Um, Curve Cycling are um, a business here in Melbourne and they make beautiful titanium and steel frames. Um, I was fortunate enough to ride this bike last year for the Trans Am. This is the original Belgi, titanium Belgi and it has done some crazy miles and it would have some crazy stories if it could tell them. Um, and I love riding this bike. Um, I didn't feel I needed another frame. I, um, I'm using what works. Um, I look after this bike, it'll look after me. So of course it'll get a few, um, few bits of um, TLC before kickoff, but um, I will be on this bike again. Um, as far as my bag setup, I will be using Apertura. So most people are familiar with what the Apertura bags look like. Uh, this is one of the dry saddle packs. I'll be using that alongside um, some feed bags, top tube bags, etc. Um, they've been super supportive of my racing in the last six months. They came aboard for Race to the Rock and uh, supporting me uh, throughout this whole year again. So um, excited to have them aboard. So both, both Curve Cycling and Apertura are sponsors. Um, in addition to Rafa. Uh, so Rafa Australia have been super supportive again since the end of last year uh, through Race to the Rock and heavily this year with um, all aspects of my riding and 
my goals for this year. So um, I will be utilising um, their cycling gear uh, throughout this race. So super, super happy to have all three sponsors aboard. Everything I take with me, bike, the luggage, everything together. It's something that has uh, done already a couple of thousand kilometers with me. So I know what to expect about my bike, my wheels, my gears, my luggage. It's, um, there is nothing new, new on. Probably I changed a couple of things like a uh, new chain or whatever. But I never, never gonna start such things with, um, I say something, a brand new bike or a new luggage or new clothes or whatever. So everything I have riding already a couple of thousand kilometers with it. So just because I have to trust everything uh, at the moment, um, I'm, I'm not looking for the lightest things on the market. I prefer to have something that's more heavier but they can trust day and night even in the old bag or um, in the middle of nowhere because if you have the, the most modern thing or the lightest setup or whatever but if you get stuck in the middle of the night I think you only have uh, eyes for uh, for screaming so what does it mean to have the lightest of the lightest so I just want to have things I can really trust and I think Australia will be a, um, a big, big, big adventure for everybody. Because if you ask uh, advice of people, or people know this section or that other section, but nothing between or the parts between. So for everybody, it's a, it's an adventure. So everybody will get on the start line. I just give them a big, big, big. Uh, respect and I wish everybody the best and good luck and no problems or whatever so see you at the start line bye